This is what happens when fans start freaking out about stuff, okay? There's been news, a lot of stuff going on with A.J. Brown. There's been some news from Josina Anderson involving changes to the coaching staff. Jeffrey Lurie taking more of an involvement in operations for the Philadelphia Eagles. And there's a lot to talk about here. We still got a playoff game for Monday and a lot to say here, so let's get into it. Yo, yeah, what is going on, guys? I hope everyone's having a fantastic day today. So, uh, yeah, we, I mean, we have a few more days. We have a playoff game Monday night, and, um, you know, a lot is going on. You know, the teams that are not in the playoffs, a lot of coaches are getting fired, you know, moved around, and a lot of interest from other teams and interviews and all this crazy stuff going on. But within the Philadelphia Eagles, even though the Eagles do have a playoff game, you always hear the rumors of things going on behind the scenes. Um, and there has been some news. Josina Anderson put some news on potentially that the Eagles could be moving on, um, you know, making a move with their coaching staff, multiple moves uh, when it comes to the defensive side of the football. OK, now. At the end of the day, we're going to find out what happens. OK, I think the size should be fired. Matt Patricia shouldn't even be here and they need to go after a D.C., not in control of Nick Sirianni, okay? Since we know who the scapegoat is, we know that Nick's taking less of the blame and less of the blame, or at least he's putting it out that way, that, you know, Brian Johnson is is going to get his interviews and might, he might not even, this could be, th these teams are just doing their due diligence right now to just get as many interviews as possible where you're, where you're early in the process right now. Okay, we know all the information of what's going on. And yes, I want them to hire a defensive coordinator that wants to bring his own style of defense to Philadelphia. And trust me, I've wanted Wink Martindale. I've wanted at least, you know, Jim Schwartz to come back. I mean, at this point, like, I need a coach that the philosophy of this team has got to change. Okay, we talked about it a million times. Bring in another assistant from another team that's never been a coordinator that has never even been a defensive coordinator or maybe been a coordinator a long time ago and really, you know, is just going to uh, just want what Nick wants and say yes to because this is just going to be a recycling puddle of shit that we're going to keep going through every single year. It is time to let these coordinators have their own playbooks. It is time to let these coordinators have their own say and have full control of what they do on game day. And yes, not to be a dictator, not to say they're not going to listen to what other coaches are going to tell them. They make the final decision of what they want to do on game day. And if it fails, they take 100% of the blame. So um, Josina Anderson does say, I'm told Philadelphia at this time is already considering some staff changes after the season, particularly on the defensive side. Now, this might not be defensive coordinator, but obviously it is because I don't see Matt Patricia being here unless Bill Belichick comes here or some stupid shit like that. And I don't see and Sean Desai has already been pretty much put up to the booth already, has already been kicked out pretty much already. And there's already been rumors that Sean Desai will not be back with the Philadelphia Eagles this year. And I'm perfectly fine with that. Okay. No issue with that whatsoever. Um, but when it comes down to other news, you know, um, I mean, like I said, it, it comes down to the philosophy. And, and then, you know, news coming out, Jeffrey Lurie um, taking a more active interest in football operations. What that means for Nick Sirianni's future is still too early to tell. Okay, this is from Jeff McClain. That's what he's heard inside news, which who knows, this could be bullshit. But I would have to say that Jeffrey Lurie has stepped in. I think one example of how Jeffrey Lurie is involved, he's been at the Eagles practice like all week. Jeffrey Lurie has been at Eagles practice, I think, the whole, every day this week, literally. He's been very involved in everything. And maybe since we figured if Howie's involved and has all this control, maybe Jeffrey Lurie hasn't been involved this whole time, okay? We know that he was involved in a lot of drafting before Nick Sirianni came here and then kind of backed off and they started drafting from bigger, better schools. And now when it comes to the roster, Jeffrey Lurie needs to see how this team plays Monday night. And they need to see... If the players seem to be giving up on their head coach, then I think harsh realities are going to come into effect for Nick Sirianni because I think Jeffrey Leary is trying to get a vibe from the players of how do they feel after a loss. You know, even during this play, even for the playoff game on Monday, if Jeffrey Leary sees that this team has no fight, no soul, no, no nothing to bring to the table and doesn't seem to be uplifted 
And this coach is just, at this point, you know, you really have to go out there and find somebody that's going to set the st- set the standard when it, and I really I have no issue with Nick Sirianni as, as a play, as a players coach at all. It comes down to full control on what the offense or defense he wants. And Nick Sirianni, stay the fuck away from a playbook. That's the main thing that needs to change as of right now. And it yeah, it gets really annoying at times. So like I said. You know, if Jeffrey Lurie is getting more involved, it's really for the players to see. Are the players losing it with this head coach? Do they believe in what Nick Sirianni is putting on the board? It's not fair to the players, and obviously the players play, okay? We know that there's some positions that are flawed right now, and because of these schemes from offense and defense, everything is flawed. But if Jeffrey Lurie is seeing that there is a there is a roster right now that's too good on paper, that you're not getting the most out of their strengths and weaknesses, you're not using them to the ability to win football games, putting them in the best position to get these wins, okay, then you're going to need to have you're gonna have a problem. And Jeffrey Lurie is gonna have to make a tough decision. It doesn't matter to me if Nick Sirianni was in the Super Bowl last year. I don't give a shit. Okay. They and yes, if they have the urge to fire Doug Peterson after a you know a few years after a Super Bowl winning head coach first in history, bringing the Lombardi Trophy home, it wouldn't it wouldn't shock me that this firing of Nick Sirianni will be a walk in the park at this point. And I'm really not like, oh my God, Nick might get fired. Like I'm not surprised if he does, and if he does, then. They cannot go in this repeating circle with Howie Roseman fully involved. They cannot go get this guy because we used to have this guy as a coach and he knows this guy. And well, we're going to take his word for it that, you know, let's just let's just bring him here. Because at the end of the day, Frank Reich is the only reason why Nick Sirianni was here. Frank Reich is the only reason why Carson Wentz was traded to Indianapolis. Okay, let's be fucking real here. Okay. Um they have got to let these let a head coach just be a player's coach and obviously have control on some things because he needs to look over his staff. But these coordinators are going to be the number one thing and Howie Roseman will be the number one thing of what he is going to do, what he is going to let go of, and he's going to need to be in a collaborative, a more of a collaborative effort. And I'm I'm sorry, but I don't care who you draft. I don't get I don't care who you get in free agency. I don't I don't fucking care at this point because If they're going to be in a flawed system, and this is hence why every time I release a player, every time a player goes somewhere else, they're always successful. And that's just one of the biggest problems. So Jeffrey Lurie's involvement could be a good thing or a bad thing. I think mostly this is really his involvement is going to be for the players and football operations. Yeah, it's, it's part of the, of the roster and it's part of what the Eagles do on a daily basis. I think he wants to take a closer look on what's really going on. And I'm telling you right now, it's, this GM to allowing this head coach to do whatever the fuck he wants to do. Hence why who's going to get the blame? Desai's going to get the blame, which he should. Patricia's going to get the blame, you know, which they probably should, but that's not, they're not running their own defense. Desai came in to run someone else's playbook. Patricia was switched with Desai to run another playbook. Um, this is Nick's offense, Nick's game plan. Brian Johnson's getting two interviews right now. How the hell is he getting interviews? Why is he getting interviews? The Eagles lost five of the last six fucking games, and they have a fucking interview. It's because it's because everybody around the league knows what, how the Eagles are running things. That's why the Eagles won't get a pushback head coach with an ego. That's why they won't get a head coach that wants a little bit of control. It's all pushback, and they don't want any tort, no pushback towards the front office. They'll stick with the analytics. They'll stick with, you know, if Howie Roseman sat back there for weeks and let this offense run the way it has been, shame on him. Shame on Nick. At least talk at least talk to each other. I don't I don't know what's going on behind the scenes every week, how this team completely did a 180 and looked like the and this team looks like the worst team in the league. The worst team in the league. There's no team that's worse than the Eagles right now. On paper, they shouldn't be, but how they're getting coached, 
It's a whole other story. And that's up to Jeffrey Lurie to really make some big changes, huge changes that could change this franchise forever. So that's all I got to say about Jeffrey Lurie's involvement, no doubt. Now, I want to go to some of the injuries for the Philadelphia Eagles out of practice, okay? So Reed Blankenship has a groin injury. Um, unfortunately, is not going to practice and, you know, ha- is dealing with an injury. And the Eagles are down on safeties right now, totally down on safeties, which we found out from Kevin Byer that they have been moving Avante Maddox to safety, which I think is a really good deal. I, I think it was a while ago when Rodney McLeod was here. I forgot what when he, I think it was his rookie year or the year after he played a little bit of safety. I think Ronnie McLeod was out or something like that. I know he played a little bit. It might have been his rookie year. I'm not sure. Uh, but he has played safety. And Avante Max is pretty quick. He hasn't really played well since he's been back. But he's he just got back off of pectoral or whatever it was. So it's going to take him some time. And unfortunately, there's no time left. <laughs> we have no time as of right now. Um, you know, so moving him to safety, obviously you're going to have Eli Ricks, you're going to have Josh Job. you know, they're going to, they might have to do this thing now where, you know, Bradbury really shouldn't be a number two this week. I really want, I'd rather have Keely Ringo at this point. I hate, you know, Bradbury has been an absolute disaster. Um, you have, uh, Sidney Brown, obviously, uh, you know, you're, I mean, Sidney Brown has the ACL, so you're down, what, three safeties now. I mean, you're down Justin Evans. He's out for the year. So, uh, Sidney Brown's out for the year. Um, you know, like I said, it's, it's very short that they're going to have to move guys around. The problem is we don't have any hybrid guys. We're running out. Sidney Brown was really the last of the hybrid type guys that we have. Um, obviously Reed Blanchett will probably be back after this week if we advance, that would be a great thing, but you know, you're down on safeties and obviously if they keep Bradbury at number two, which I can't fucking stand, um, they're going to have to put, you know, Josh Job, Eli Ricks are going to be working some other guys in the middle. So, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens there. So quick update, um, on what's been going on with AJ Brown. And it looks like AJ Brown will not be playing, um, in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers wild card game in Tampa. Um, you know, did not practice at all this week. Um, It's unfortunate, you know, MetLife turf is just a curse, and this is what we have to deal with. Um, If the Eagles do advance uh, to get to divisional, um, you know, A.J. Brown could be back for that game, um, and that's what I'm hoping. Um, Hopefully this gives the Eagles more incentive to run the football with DeAndre Swift, uh, like I've been saying. Um, so, you know, you're going to have AJ Brown, going to have Quez Watkins really stepping up. It's going to take everybody to win this game, including the coaching staff. So, um, hope AJ gets well. Um, you know, no wonder they've told him to pretty much stay home and heal up because, you know, him walking on that knee is not, or being there, you know, is really not going to do much of anything. Just needs to rest up as much as possible. Um, don't know if he's just going to be there for the game, but, um, he just needs to rest up, and the Eagles really have to. Everybody has to pitch in. I mean, it's not going to be on one guy or two guys. This win is on everybody, and it's going to be a team effort uh, for this to happen. Um, so that was a quick update on A.J. Brown and what has been going on. So other than that, guys, that's pretty much it. We kind of went through, obviously, uh, you know, changes. Jeffrey Lurie kind of being more involved now. He was at practice all week. So what changes could we see? I think this playoff game is going to be definitely important to – for that reason, for a lot of reasons. So um, it's going to be interesting. We'll see what happens. And um, and that's it. You guys enjoy the rest of your day. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Shakes it up. Follow us. Peace out, guys. Peace.